Alright guys, this is Sam from Overground Sound. We had an interview with Alt J the other day and I reckon it went really well, so enjoy it. Matilda and Fitzpatrick, did you guys produce that yourselves? No, no, we got Charlie, uh, we've got a producer called Charlie Andrew. Yeah. Um, and he's in Brixton. And yeah. We've, all, our, all, our, all our work that you've probably heard has been, has been produced okay. by Charlie. Okay, because on the stuff that I read, the press that I read, we spent a lot of time working producing in whose room? Who's bed? Wills, yeah. So, and then a bit of Tom's. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah Will's bedroom was where it all started. Yeah. In your room. Sorry, Will's room. No, sorry, your room. Yeah. 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 But just just more getting ideas down than anything else and and just sort of going through the <clears> learning <throat> experience of how to structure a track and how it all how it all works. Because really. mm. there's something really sort of um, I don't know. It's really great to see it. All in all different colours in a timeline. Um, you can really like visualise the whole structure of a song because it's all there on, on the screen in front of you. So it's mm. quite an interesting way to sort of approach songwriting. But we I mean we haven't produced anything ourselves for like two two years. Mm. Um, no. So what about that we did that demo in the bathroom to, with the multi track. Oh, yeah, we did that multi track. Yeah. We do it's really nice actually. It was nice, yeah. It's a nice thing to do still, you know, record different tracks ourselves and mix it and stuff. Mm. And, you can really get good results. But yeah. I think Charlie's a great asset to that. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy to work with. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're not, we're, we, I don't have any producing experience at all apart from, apart from what I've taught myself through YouTube videos. So we have to use Charlie and, and our relationship with Charlie is one that's just as creative as probably being in the band. Mm. He, has as much, he has a lot of input in terms of how we approach recording and, and how we structure songs and, and what we add and take away. Mm. And is that a relationship that's going to endure? What type of... Well, I think... I think um, because obviously he's not on tour, is no, he? No, no, I think he... Well, we, we're already you know, looking to the next album, kind of thing, well, you know, in the future, and I, 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 I personally don't think I will be doing it with anyone else other than Charlie. Yeah. And um, also, um, yeah, he's still going to be... Oh, we're, we're going on... We're doing rehearsals for playing... Um, the album because we're going to be rehearsing the album and, and he's going to be there on a couple of decks because um, he needs to because he's the producer <coughs> he needs to be there with the sound guy to have, so we can all work out how the sound sounds on stage <laughs> and um, mm. so he, he's he's it's going to endure yeah just because he's played an important role in the whole shaping of, of us of our songs so it, it'd be we do need, we still need him we need him yeah <laughs> we need him He's great. What was the first thing that you guys did together? Well, we, we, we were well, we were at a party when we, we all met. Well, I first met Tom because yeah. I met you guys before that. Yeah. Mm. Um, we met at university. Yeah, we I were. want to know the first thing that you all four did together, just the four of you. We went to a party, a house party. But the first thing the only four of us did. Yes. It's probably that I can remember the band is, practice is that where we played what we'd done on portrait to Tom who sat mm. in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. Yeah. That was in my room. So I think I was yeah, at like was maybe room. two band practices before Tom joined. Yeah. And then Tom, you came along and we all did that practice. And so it was started with the music, man. Mm. That's what I mean. Yeah. And can you all remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Tell me about that. Um, well, it was funny because I think. Tom only brought his snare drum because um, we we didn't really know um, what it was going to be like, and we didn't. I think we were, didn't want to just be like bring all your drums, obviously, because it was in Gwil's bedroom. And I know that over the next few weeks, I think Tom was bringing one more piece at a time. Yeah, mm. so that's how I remember it. Anyway, was mm. the first one was the snare, and then we were like, yeah, the snare's great, but you know, bass drum would sound really good as well. It was that bass drum, and then yeah. maybe um, then we had the saucepan, obviously. The saucepan that dogged us for mm. three years. <laughs> mm, very recently. Um, so that's my memory of it. It was just having a snare and listening to the song called Portrait and Tom playing and it sounding great. And that's yeah. been like great. This, yeah. is, this is good. We've, we've it, was, it, was just, it was just an exciting click, wasn't it? Because <clears throat> uh, I suppose we could have never stopped adding members, really. Mm. Where did, you know, there, was no, there was nothing to say, we're going to start a four-piece band. We're going to be a four-piece band. Yeah. So... You it's know, weird, isn't it? So yeah. then, once, so then, 
you brought me along, and that wasn't quite enough. No, we're like, we need something else. And then Tom, and then Tom came, came along, and it was like, like, okay, I think we can we can work with this keys, the guitars, the singing, and the and the voice. I mean, the drums. Mm. So, I want to know about that exciting clip, please. Um, well, I just I just remember um, I just remember just because I I had written portrait. Uh, it was over Christmas. No, it wasn't. It was over Easter of of two thousand and. And then I, yeah, um, so the song was written, Gwil and I had been, we'd always been working together before uh, Tom and Gus arrived on the scene. So Gwil had a part that he played along to it. To, uh, Gus quickly just did something to the keyboard. And then when we were all there, I just remember Tom just doing, just doing that. Yeah, that. Just, 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 yeah. just the, I remember the beat because it was just like, just that. Yeah. It was just a roll. Yeah. <laughs> sort of not a roll. It was more like a yeah. and it was just like mm, I've not heard anyone play the drums like this before. Actually, it's not just come along with a full kit and just like yeah. doing yeah. a four 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 sort of. That's cool. That's cool. It was like it's pretty minimal. This is interesting. This is good. And yeah. Tom was in the band. You were still in the band, weren't you? So you were still you were you were a practicing drummer, weren't you? You were moonlighting. Yeah, I'm at home, so I live pretty pretty close to uni anyway. So I was in the band there. At home, Harrogate. <coughs> that actually kind of wore off. So that's when I brought all my kit over to Leeds. But it still wasn't like a drum kit, it was just a bass drum, really, with a snare drum. The source man. I don't use any cymbals at all, I still don't. Why not? Uh, because, well, it started because we had no room for, for, for cymbals. Uh, and then it just, it, just, it just works out better, it, it sounds better. It's because the, the, the drums are more disciplined and uh, you have to be a lot more creative for it to sound good. Um, just, just, it's just worked out that, that it, it's, it's, that's what we are now, I suppose. You know, we're part of what we are. And it would be a shame like, to get symbols. But that first time you played drums, yeah. the first time you guys played together in that way, <coughs> why... Did you play like that? Because uh, it's a very important part of your music, mm -hmm. that. Because we we were in Will's bedroom, it was, it was pretty small. Yeah. And there's four of us in there. And, um, it was initially just, uh, I went along because I'd met friends with them at uni and um, they invited me along. And it wasn't even like, do you want to come to band practice? It was just like, well, you, you, you play the drums, don't you? Do you want to come along? And, and we've done this. Yeah. And, it's never really been about like band band time. Like it's just yeah. it was just, just happens to be what we do. Like, we do take it pretty seriously, but um, yeah, it was just no room for symbols, and uh, it wasn't. Um, I didn't, you know, in my head, it wasn't like I'm gonna go and be in a band. It was just uh, I just had my snare drum. You know. So but we've always tried to keep it kind of like that, quite modest. Mm. Well, so. modest in some ways. Yeah. Clean. Yeah, m m yeah, modest. <laughs> it's not modest in its creativity. No, that's true. What did I, what did, what did I mean by modest? I don't know. Um, made like it up. Stripped down. Indulgent. Yeah. It's not indulgent. Yes, yeah. 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 It's yeah. More disciplined. Music. Yeah, it's not indulgent exactly. Yeah. 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 But the thing is that I was quite interested in what made you play with that particular beat because that is something that. It's, it's like a line through it, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yeah. It must be something to do with all of you. I think the, f the fact that we heard this that music means. was um, quite unusual. And certainly for me, being presented with a keyboard and told to play something, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to play something a bit different here because I've been presented with something quite different. You know, I think it was a challenge. The music was a challenge. And so it was like, okay, how do I rise to this challenge? And it's a, play it's a was, playful challenge yeah, as well, then, because yeah. also... Because we weren't like being a band, we were just hanging out. It was just about like seeing what sounds we could make, not being like we've got to make, we've got to have this many tracks by this day or anything yeah. like that. It was like, yeah, we're going around to our house again. <coughs> we're gonna fuck around with our instruments. And when you find something we like, we gotta like kind of like get hold of it and like put it there for a bit, and then find out another bit, and then maybe that bit could go with that bit, and then that's how it sort of works. And, and, I think we spent the first practice, I remember spending a long time in the first practice just because I had the keyboard 
we were putting it through this little guitar amp, which used to belong to your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Called, it was called a fat rat. <laughs> and um, and I was just putting the trumpet sounds through the um, with the distortion up really yeah, high. Amazing. I was like, whoa! And then I'd play some more and put the distortion up even higher. And we were like, oh man, oh that sounds God. great. Yeah. So that was the kind of thing we were doing. It was wasn't just like, was, okay, was, Gus, write your part, and um, it's got to you've got to play in this bit, and not play in this bit. It was just like, let's mess about a bit, let's mess do about. some interesting stuff. But then sometimes when you find a bit you really like. Yeah, just being like, yeah, we're gonna remember, remember that, it, and remember that, yeah. maybe record it, yeah. and then come back to it later yeah. on. See, it seems like five minutes ago, really. Mm. We were even doing that because we were at uni. Obviously, we had like that was the priority we were uni. If we'd gone to music college, maybe it would have been different. I think we were very, very lucky that, that we met the way we did. Yeah, yeah we're lucky we didn't go to music college. I think that would have been yeah. terrible yeah. for the band. Yeah. Destructive. <laughs> there wouldn't be a band. Mm. No. We'd all have been in like five bands and we'd yeah. been way too wrapped up in ourselves musically. You, it, I think a lot of, I think that the music colleges, they know too much music and it often gets in the way of the creativity of actually doing something interesting because they just know too much and they want too much. So. Sounds like you were very free. The point at which you all first met, you were creatively free. Yeah, definitely. Well, we were at uni. And when we were studying fine arts, we were doing fine arts. Loads of spectacles. Loads of spectacles. So it, you, you did feel like there was, you know, you had a loan uh, financially you were taken care of. You know, you had to pay rent, yeah, but in, in some cases, you know, your parents were helping you do that. So you, you didn't really have much to worry about. And uh, it was one of those things, one of those very fortunate things where we could actually spend a lot of, of our free time on. Also, do you think that, because two of you are studying art, and, and Tom as well, three of you, English, okay, that still counts though. Yeah, it still counts. It still counts. It still counts. <laughs> Just for the artistic. <laughs> still a degree, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our creative culture. Yeah, is that? Yeah. yeah. I yes. think it. I think yeah. I think it was. I think the only difference now is that obviously we're aware that we're meant meant to be being professionals, I suppose. Mm. And so, yeah, all the only difference is, is that we're probably just more disciplined about about how much time we spend doing it, mm. and that's it. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it. We still have the same approach. We still spend a lot of time. Well, not recently because we've been touring, but like a lot, when we were, we were back at home, just a lot of time, just jamming, mm. loads, mm. and then you just find that, you know, that we're, iPhones are fucking great for recording. Mm. We've got some really weird jams. Yeah, the gut has yeah. got so, somewhere. Man, we listen to them the and other you night. you forget you've made them, and then you're like, and you go back and listen, and you're like, whoa, I can't believe I is this us? <laughs> that was great actually. Yeah, we were, like, we no were in a hotel. You and me, like, yeah. in, um, where? Christ knows where. I don't even know what country no, we're Ireland. in. Ireland. Oh, uh, Ireland. You, yeah, it was Ireland because yeah, we had that s- the smoking area. Yeah. Day, and it was great. <laughs> we just listened to these jams. 
We'd record like Maybe months ago. But I, but I have no recollection of playing it at all. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I wouldn't know how to play it. It's weird. That's not weird. No? No. It just means that your music is true. Okay. Yeah. Knowledge. Mm. Truth is knowledge. Because <laughs> <Truth is knowledge. laughs> you do stuff that you can't remember doing. Yeah. Mm. So you just. Yeah. So it's true. Mm. It was inspired at the, at the time. Yeah. yeah. I think the funny thing is, is that it's. I don't think we don't struggle that much actually doing it. Do you know, like, well, I think we're always kind of like amazed that when we finish a track or we've got a new bit in the track that we're excited about. Yeah. But, I, I donn't really know how it happened. Yeah. It just happened. Mm. Mm. And then I don't think there's that much. There's thought in terms of things like structuring a song. Mm. And sometimes you just get problems with the structure of a song. Like one bit can't go back into that bit again, you know, because of repetition or whatever. But most of the time, it's kind of just, it kind of makes itself on our, on our on our kind of path. But anyway, because Joe writes the actual like melody and the lyrics of things, so there's a lot more sort of. That's that's a completely different world to our world, really. Your your bathroom world, mm. you know. bedroom and bathroom, mm. and kitchen, late nights. Yeah. Yeah. Is going to talk about that world or? Uh, well, uh, you don't have to. No, I, I don't know. There isn't much to talk about really, other than um, sometimes I play the guitar and um, in when I'm running a bar. And I sit on the toilet and I play the guitar because the acoustics are good. And I just work on the songs. I really, yeah, I find it hard to actually describe it just because I do it all the time and so it doesn't really, it's nothing special. So, it's nothing special for me. I don't think that's weird though. Yeah. I can, get, I can see that. Um, mm. That thing about the guitar at that time. Mm. But you wouldn't do that unless you had a particular kind of internal freedom. Mm. Yeah. It's got very permissive housemates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that probably helps. A lot of time. <laughs> we were very accepting. That's us, obviously. Well, it was until very recently when we all lived together. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we, we let Joe sing wherever and whenever he wanted. Thanks, <laughs> Ron but they're all important things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, you know, I mean, I don't think it's at all strange. I think it's really good. But it's also important. Because mm. that, you hear everything that you're talking about, you hear and is precious. So, I'm trying to look at your next album. Mm. That must be on your minds a bit. But you know what? It's actually not. It is and it isn't. It's kind of like... Um, I think about it now and again, personally, but I'm also more focused on getting this album out yeah. and just seeing how people think, how, how they react to this, this form of work that we've done. That's, that's, really, that's really exciting. But I suppose what's more exciting is you know, trying to trump that with the next album. But... I think we should focus on one, one thing at a time and just yeah. get this get this out and, and work on playing it live. That's our main concern. But all the while actually working on songs for the, for the next album. So it's a bit of a juggling game now. You probably can't help yourselves. No, no, you can't. Yeah. yeah. So I'll figure out with you guys. Wow. Do you... Um, do you have this sense of um, how exciting your sound is or are you surprised at, I mean, I'm just one of, there's about 30 of us and we all have different genres, we've got a metalhead, we've got lots of different people who like different things in our business, but we all think like me, about you. Are you surprised or what? It's a hard, the it's a hard question because I, um, I think we make music that we, we want to hear. So in that sense, I think you would make, we make music to appreciate it ourselves, but then because you're doing it, you can never appreciate it properly because you've, yeah. you've already heard it and you've yes. known the process gone into it, so yeah. you, know, you can never hear your music for the first time. 
I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that's a good answer. It's hard because yeah. like, s- we're always kind of flattered, but you like anything, you kind of, you do get used to it. Like you kind of get you. But I don't I don't know why. You know I don't know. Like Gold saying, I don't really understand the music that much, but I don't know. Just being surprised is like. It sort of comes back, comes back to this question for me a bit of like how seriously we took the band and take the band. Like, for a lot of what we told you earlier, it might sound as though we didn't take the band very seriously at I first. Didn't think that at all. No, I'm not saying yeah. you thought that, but no. you know what I mean? Looking back on it, it was sort of like, oh, we're, we're mates. And it's all we always say, oh, we were friends, we were friends first, and we had the band, and then we weren't just starting a band. But we also took it very seriously. Um, and so, in that sense, I'm not surprised that people like the music. It sounds really immodest to say that, really arrogant, it may be, but we've worked, we did work very hard on it for a long time, and mm. I think we were always making music that we wanted people to hear. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? I think, I think, it, I think if, you know. if, if we're making it, we make it so that we like it. Yeah. So if we like it, then we can't really be surprised if other people like it. Yeah. It's, just, it is, it's definitely still an odd thing. It's great. Yeah. It's, 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 it's strange to... <clears throat> it's, just, it's surprising to... It's strange to meet people who are like... You've never met before, and they're like, "I love your band," and you know, like, that's that's great, and that's that's a a, a, a feeling that no, I none of us have had before, obviously. But no, I think it's um, you know, we 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 are we we are very harsh critics of our own music. So we, what when we release music to the public, playing it live or putting out stuff on the internet or whatever, it's gone through a pretty rigorous process of criticism mm. from mm. the four of us. Mm. So. Yeah. And critically, you're almost like consumers because you're sort of like artistically oriented. Because you're artists. Mm. So, um, do any of you know a guy called Magnus Ostrom? Who's, he was the drummer with EST. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. So, I mean, he's probably <coughs> like him and Jameer William. They've got to be like the top two or three drummers in, okay. in the world. Yeah. And um, he's written a song called um, Longing, which I also rate incredibly highly. And when we interviewed him last summer, what we did with him was we said, like, okay, just try and forget you wrote Longing, yeah, because Longing, please all listen to it, yeah, mm. it's unbelievably brilliant. Just try, try to forget it, right, and now listen to it. And as he was listening to it, he got tears in his eyes because he was because he's so disciplined, as I'm sure all of you are as well. He was able to put his knowledge of his own music behind. Mm. And I would like you guys to do that to Matilda. To see if you can understand what I heard and everyone else is hearing. Mm. Will you do that? Now? Yeah. Who's going first? I'll get out of the way. <laughs> but you have to really concentrate on emptying your head. Okay. Yeah, of That's what you know. <laughs> That's driving crazy. It is really... I might well, just discover something I really don't like. You won't. <laughs> Guarantee it. <laughs> and, then, and also, I would like you guys to, um, to, if you can, to listen to... I'll write the track down for you to Longing by Michael mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's like a really involved musician, and I think that even if you don't like like his stuff, I think that you'll mm. you'll sort of like you'll kind of get it. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice a, to be recommended stuff to listen to. Mm. Mm. People don't do that enough to us, actually. Mm. I would say. Yeah. A lot. It sounds yeah. surprising, maybe, but a lot of time people don't. I can't even remember. Ever the last feel they can do that. Yeah. It's, it's like you shouldn't do it. Yeah. But yeah, people should do that. Yeah. Well, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Doesn't matter, yeah. does it? But if you, when you listen to Long and give it, um, sort of like, um, give Gus, do you want to give Tom his? Oh, what's I've got my silver. Oh, what? <laughs> 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 I thought I did. <coughs> I should. There we are. I, how come I, I don't have a I don't have any of our songs on my phone. Uh, I've got the uh, radio edit, all the full length, full length version. <laughs> What's going on there, uh, I don't know. What do you reckon, Jeff? No, I hope not. <laughs> 
Let's, let's do a big <laughs> quote. Yeah, yeah. Let's say yes. You have to, that can be your headline. We're going to be bigger headline. than Radiohead. No, because you're, you're different then. Yeah. It's just that it's really difficult to think of bands that have got the same integrity and originality as you and yet have also been really successful and yet aren't completely fucked up by it. Because mm. you guys are not going to get fucked up. Mm. Fingers crossed. Not yet. Oh, in that. Oh, really, if you do get oh, fucked up, just get unfucked after. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 plenty yeah. of plans. Yeah. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah. Good plan. <laughs> Always have a plan B. Yeah. yeah. And don't expect everything to like always be perfect. Mm. Mm. No. Keep, keep, keep it all grounded. Would anybody like a beer? I'm gonna have a beer. Yeah, I'd like. like a beer. I actually put a beer out yeah. for me, and then I just didn't get around to it. No, no. See, I yeah. told you he'd be out. He's really concentrating. I think he's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're all really clever, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we've... Some of us are pretty bright. Mm, you are. So I think, you know, collectively we'll, we'll, we'll do all right. I think that you only Maybe. choose to use a particularly... a particular bit of your brain. That's, that's what I think. Yeah. What mm-hmm. bit's that? Yeah. Yeah. That's the bit. That's the bit that's closely related to beauty and music. And I think mm. you basically discard everything else. Mm. Right? You certainly have to, being in a band is certainly a process of shutting off certain parts of yourself, I think, you know, you yeah, just, you don't, true. yeah. I can't do basic mental arithmetic, I can't do, I don't mind my times tables, I can't do mm. basic addition and subtraction, no division, division, <laughs> division. division's out the window. I think you do have to kind of, yeah, focus on certain parts of your character and skills and stuff and put other things to one side. Being in a band full time, it's quite strange. Yeah. yeah. You say that, right? Yeah. Because that's what you guys do. And that discipline is a very profound discipline that you've just talked about. Mm. And it's not an easy discipline. Mm. Right? You take it for granted. But imagine if you were someone else. You wouldn't do that. No. no. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Did you get teary? It is. Uh, it's pretty hard work. Couldn't um, dis- dis- associate it with anything. You might be able to when you're not in school. Because at the moment you're, it is hard. Yeah, I've listened to it, so it's got it has my own personal attachments to it as well. I've got my own attachments yeah. to it. And, um, what else? It is quite weird. Though. It sounds really weird. That's the radio edit. Sorry, you're listening, listening to the radio, radio edit. edit. Yeah, no, because yeah. I want to see if it was different to this oh. one. I listen to the, the long radio. Yeah, so What's going on? Ah, there we go. There we go. They look like I've heard of Bowers and Wilkins. It sounded different and I still couldn't. It's fine. If it, well, when you're listening, you were saying about discipline or how because you guys are in a band like focus on any particular part of your brain you know? and I was saying that that's a really really highly disciplined thing to do it's a, it's really, it's a really incredibly highly disciplined thing to do because it's to do with your personality yeah and you take for granted that you do it and I mm. say that other people don't do it but you take it for granted mm. and you all do it yeah if you imagine we, that. Yeah, we don't know. I don't know what it's like for anybody else to be in a band, really. It's uh, like, you were like in school, like doing art. I was quite good at drawing and shit. Mm. And it would always be like, people would be like, how can you do that? And they'd be like, I don't know. No, you know you, don't you just look at it and you draw it? That's how it works, isn't it? I don't know. Mm. But some people couldn't do that, but they were better, way better at other things like maths. Yeah, but that's yeah. the point, though, isn't it? Yeah, the different. Yeah. And then it's just that <coughs> you guys who will kind of like, you can't like work. Mm. Mm. I'm very lucky to have gone to <coughs> the same place. Yes. You are? Yeah. Very lucky. Yeah. So I don't think there's any way I'd be in a band if it wasn't this band. Yeah. I don't have any ambition to be in a band. But I'm in this one. It's weird. I mean, it is weird, 
but then, because I heard your music first, so I don't think that's weird. Mm. I'd think that was weird if I hadn't heard your music. Mm. But because I've heard your music, then that sounds correct. It sounds normal in that context. Yeah. Can you hear that your stuff, like other stuff that you listen to, there's nothing out there that's remotely like your stuff. You know that? <sighs> Yeah, 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 but I can't, I can't quite admit it. Mm. No, no, that's okay. You don't have to. I can. You don't have to admit it. That's not really your role to admit it. In yeah. sense. Everyone, I mean, yeah, literally, everybody says that. Yeah. I mean, but it's true. This is absolutely miraculous, really. <coughs> right. Yeah. From my point of view, it is. It's just so brilliant. It's just so encouraging that that you can have something that is so new and true. It's quite ironic because, like, if we were deliberately trying to do that, like, significant, let's be yeah. as unique as possible, and then people were saying, it would be like, yeah, you're right, you're right, because we work at it, but we don't, like, we don't, do, we don't deliberately try and sound the way we sound, so it's just impossible to um, agree with. I've never seen yeah. these kind of headphones before. I know, yeah. You know, they make this, have you heard of this brand? No. They make this big artist look really. like a Zeppelin or something, and it's like, Six hundred pounds. Or something. Can you hold this? A bit like what a we do is very basic. Wow. A zeppelin. Yeah, it's called the zeppelin or something. Oh. You're the only band that brings to mind comparisons with artists, but because your music has that in it. But you, I could like you mentioned Rothko, I can instantly relate that to it. And all the artists that you would associate with with your music would be it would be so like. It would be that kind of work, or like you'd never ever put a constable in there for a start, you know, but you might put a Pollock in there mm. if you were drawing the line of artists. Yeah. Yeah. And that's got to be, that's got to have a relationship to the discipline that you individually are coming from. It's just some kind of incredible miracle that a whole bunch of artists got together with musical skill and make music but it's no coincidence yeah I reckon it's bloody brilliant thank you